Hi, my name is Vince Farrell and I'm a Senior Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video, I want to show you how to create an in-context sheet metal enclosure. This can be useful when you have all of the internal components laid out but need the box to put them in. I'm working in this assembly with a PCB, a fan, a plug, and a switch. The first thing I'm going to do is insert a new part. If I select a plane, that will mate the new part's front plane to the plane I selected and also open up a sketch. If I don't select a plane, the planes of the part will overlay the assembly's planes and no sketch will open. This sketch will be my base flange. I'm going to create a center rectangle with the midpoint lines turned on. To make sure my enclosure matches my fan, I'll make the outside edge collinear with the outside of the fan. I'll delete the top line since I want the top of the enclosure to be open and then add in my final dimension. Then I'll create a base flange. I want to make sure the material is on the outside of the sketch. I'm using a gauge table for the sheet metal parameters. Now I need to strengthen the side so I'll add in some edge flanges. I love how SOLIDWORKS miters the corners for me. Next, I want to create a vent for the fan. Since I use this fan a lot and the vent sketch is complicated, I will insert it as a sketch block. Please refer to our video on sketch blocks for more information. I'll use the fan to position the sketch right in the center, again taking advantage of the in-context editing. Now I'll create a vent feature using this sketch, defining the shape, corner radii, ribs, and spars. I also need to add holes for fasteners and openings for the plug and switch. I'll create a new sketch on the outside face. I need to hide the body in order to pick up the geometry from the other parts. Then I'll use the convert entities to pick up all of the edges of the holes. If I needed these larger for clearance, I would use offset entities. I'm going to add in the outline for the plug, but this part intersects the wall of the enclosure so I'm going to use an intersection curve. I'll right click and select tangency to get all of the outside faces. The last cutout I'll do is for the switch. I'll use a corner rectangle and exit the sketch. I can't cut the holes until I unhide the body. In a sheet metal part, this is buried under the cut list. With the body shown, I'll do a cut extrude using up to next to cut only this side of the enclosure. Next, I'll use the hole wizard to create holes for mounting the PCB. I'm doing countersunk number 8 holes and I'll relate them to the holes on the board. In this case, it's easier to drop them close to the holes and then create concentric relations. Since I designed this part in context, there are external references to the assembly. 
This means if things change within the assembly, for example the fan moves, the vent and mounting holes will move along with it. However, this means that SOLIDWORKS needs to check the assembly for the positioning, which can be annoying. Once your design is solidified, I would recommend breaking the external references. Keep in mind though that once the references are broken, they can't be unbroken. You will need to go into the sketch and create the relations in context again. Locking them will keep them from updating and they can be unlocked later. This part has been saved virtually, which means to access it, I need to have the assembly open. I'm going to save it externally so that I can create a drawing of it and open it in its own window. I'll check out the flat pattern and then create a quick drawing of it. You can repeat this entire process to create an in-context cover for the enclosure. Hopefully this video showed you why creating sheet metal parts in context can be useful. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.